welcome back to Vlogs of History. I'm your host, Darius Cousin, and as you've probably noticed, I've been gone for the last three weeks. The reason why I was gone was that I was visiting my family back home in Romania, and I couldn't really make videos for you guys. But now I'm back and I'm stronger than ever, so I'm ready to get started. As you can see behind me, there's a new background. The reason for this is that I'm trying different things with this channel, because this is a new channel and I'm not sure exactly in the direction that I want to go with the channel, I'm trying out new backgrounds, new ways of delivering information, trying to talk faster, trying to talk slower to see what works and what doesn't. So please let me know by leaving a like if you like this new style of video or commenting what you like or don't like to let me know how I can improve and what's good already as it is. So I don't want to drag this on for too long because I do actually want to talk about history which is what this channel is all about. So without further ado, let's talk about the Wright brothers who are the creators of the modern day airplane. So if you're ready to talk about airplanes and flight, well, let's get to it. Wilbur and Orville Wright were both born in 1867 and 1871 respectively, and they were always up to something. They couldn't quite just stay there and not do anything, they always had to get their hands on something new. Constantly working on mechanical projects, taking things apart, putting them back together, and also keeping up with the latest scientific research, you could be sure that they were going to create something in their lifetime that would be worth talking about. Because they always stayed up to date with the latest scientific research, they eventually found out about Otto Lilienthal, a famous glider from Germany. Now Otto himself, he was actually a pioneer of aviation, being known as the Glider King, and he was the first one to actually propose flying as a practical concept, something that had never been done actually before. So the Wright brothers aren't actually the first ones to achieve flight. Yeah, I know, you didn't see that coming, but it's okay because their fame is actually well deserved. After Otto's unfortunate death in a glider crash, which was in a way to be expected, the Wright brothers actually found a lot of interest in flight and actually wanted to build their own prototype to achieve flight. They found big interest in flight and took Otto's research, read it, studied it, and tried to improve it as best as they could. Having the mechanical background that they had, even owning a bicycle shop for many years where they took apart bicycles, put them back together, modified them, and actually studied how a bicycle works, they took all of that knowledge and applied it to building a flight prototype. They studied the aerodynamics and actually how to make something lift off the ground and more importantly, stay up in the ground and be controlled and stable. They looked at the sky and looked at birds and how they were able to fly successfully and maintain a certain level of stability. To them this was very impressive and they wanted to study how a bird actually works and apply those concepts to the flight prototype. I mean what better inspiration than nature itself, right? Although looking at birds wasn't enough, the fact is that there were a lot more people working on flight prototypes at the same time as the Wright brothers. Although the Wright brothers eventually won, as history tells us, keep in mind that they weren't the only ones fighting for a successful flight prototype. The problem was that, let's say if you take the wings of an airplane to be this, they weren't able to figure out how to make the wings turn like this so that the aircraft could go left and right when commanded. It's important because, well, if you're going to fly a flight prototype and actually try to stay in the air for a long time, you need to have some level of control over the aircraft. You need to be able to let it go left, let it go right whenever you want to. And the problem was that nobody was able to do this so far. Eventually, Wilbur, the oldest brother, found a solution to this problem. His solution was that you could lift a small part of the wing on one side while lifting the other part of the wing on the other side in the opposite direction so that the air friction would result in the wing going left or going right whenever you wanted it to. This was revolutionary because Wilbur actually found a solution to the problem that everybody was trying to find a solution to. He was the first one and he took that solution and applied it to his prototype. This concept was called wing warping and is one of the concepts that the Wright brothers are the most known for. Remember, they weren't the first ones to actually fly a plane, but they were the first ones to build the concepts that would make flying possible in the first place. Now, the Wright brothers, constantly tweaking and improving their designs, eventually came to a full-on prototype that was ready for test flight. They headed to Kitty Hawk, North Carolina because the area there was known for its strong winds. And if you're going to fly a plane, especially a prototype of version 1, you're not entirely sure how it's going to go, so you would need winds to actually help you stabilize in the air and, well, keep you in the air. If you have no winds, it's very hard to remain in the air. On December 17th, 1903, the Wright brothers took their prototype for a series of four flights during that day. The first flight, flown by Orville, lasted 12 seconds at 120 feet, while the last flight, the fourth flight, flown by Wilbur, lasted 59 seconds at 852 feet. Now keep in mind that's very high and 59 seconds for a first test flight prototype, that was a lot, that was extraordinary for that time. 
Unfortunately, after this achievement, the Wright brothers did not get the praise and the admiration that they all expected and wanted. Instead, they got criticism. Criticism because the newspapers and the media and everybody else did not believe that they actually did what they said they did. The problem was that they only had about 5 people who witnessed the first test flights and when those people reported it to the newspapers, nobody believed them. There wasn't enough proof, there wasn't enough people. Even the pictures didn't help. The brothers, angry and baffled, thought to move overseas to Europe in an attempt to test their prototype there in hopes of getting much more success in a more receptive market. Fortunately for them, this was a good move, probably one of the best moves that they made in their aviation career. They took their prototype to Europe, making a lot of public test flights, even taking French officials on successful flights, which obviously got them a lot of publicity. Contrary to their experience in the United States, they found what they wanted in Europe. They found the praise and admiration, and they successfully established themselves as the pioneers of the modern day airplane and flight. Although not being the first ones to successfully achieve flight, the Wright brothers built the concepts, took their prototype, brought it to Europe, and cemented the idea that flying was possible and was the basis for commercial flying. Commercial flying that we all use today was because of the Wright brothers. So as I was editing the video that you're watching right now, I realized that the camera stopped recording towards the end of the video and my outro wasn't recorded. So I'm going to record an outro right now and I want to let you know that if you like the video, please leave a like on this video. Comment down below to let me know what you think of this new style. Do you like it? Do you not like it? What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? I would love to hear your feedback because I base myself off of your feedback to learn and always try to improve this show. I want to make this show the best there is on YouTube about history and for that I need your help. I need you to tell me what's good, what's bad, what should I keep going at and what should I change. So please comment down below. Also, if you like my channel, if you like history, if you like what I'm all about, please do subscribe. It shows me that you love what I do and it gives me more motivation to make more videos for you guys. So with that being said, remember that these episodes come out every single Monday. And if you've missed the previous one, I'll leave a link on the screen and in the description. Make sure to check it out. It's very interesting. I put a lot of work into it. As always, I'm your host, Darius Cousin. It's been an absolute pleasure and I will see you all next week.